Hey, what's up coders? Welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, I will explain the problem largest prime factor. The problem statement is quite simple. It says that you are given a number n and the task is to find the largest prime factor of that number. One example is given here. First of all, let me write every possible factor of the given number. So the number is 24 and the factors are 1, then we have 2, after this 3, then we have 4, then we have 6, 8, after this 12 and 24. So these are the factors of the number 24. What are the prime factors out of these? So there are two prime factors. You can see that this is a prime factor and this is a prime factor, right? Now guys, out of these two, you can see that 3 is the larger, right? So 3 is going to be the answer. 3 is the largest prime factor of this particular number, which is 24. Now, I hope you have understood the problem well. So let's talk about the solution, guys. Okay, so I have written the same example here. And the first approach that will come to your mind is quite similar to the one I have explained in the problem explanation. It says that first step is to iterate over each factor. Then in the second step, you can check if the factor is a prime factor. And in the third step, you can keep track of the largest prime factor, right? Starting with the first step, so it says that you can check each factor. How we can iterate over each factor? We can simply iterate over every number from 1 to n, right? Which is 24 for this particular case. So we can iterate over each factor from 1 to n. Oh, okay, my bad. We can iterate over each number from 1 to n. And inside this loop, we are going to check if that particular number uh, divides n completely. So if n mod i equals to 0, in that case, we can say that i is a factor. Right? This is the approach that we follow in order to iterate over each factor. This is the first approach, guys, or the first idea, or I will say the naive approach, right? We are simply going to start from 1, i equals to 1, then if uh, n mod i equals to 0, then i is a factor, quite simple. Now, I am going to talk about an approach which is going to iterate over each factor in an efficient manner. Let me explain, guys. First of all, I have written the simple approach as well, and this approach has a time complexity of O of n, of course, because we are traversing from i equals to 1 to n. I am going to uh, reduce this particular complexity to O of something which is square root of n. How? Let me explain guys. So I have written one example here and for this example, first of all, I am going to write every factor of this particular number. So first of all, we have 1 as the factor, right? And we have 36 as well here, right? After this, we have second factor as 2. So when we say a factor, uh, then it basically means that 36 by 2 is equal to some number which means that 36 uh, is completely divisible by 2 or I can say that 36 mod 2 is equal to 0. So what is the number that we get when we divide 36 by 2? It's 18, right? So I can say that 18 is another factor. Why I am saying that? Because can I write 36 equal to 18 into 2? Or can I write 36 by 18 equals to 2? Of course, I can write this. This means that 18 also completely divides 36. So I can write 18 as another factor, right? After this, guys, I have one more factor, which is 3. So what is the number that we get when we divide 3 by 30, uh, 36 by 3? So 36 by 3 is basically equal to 12. So I can say that 12 is another factor. Again, using the same approach, right? After this, 4 is another factor. So with 4, if I divide 36 by 4, so I'll get 9, right? And 9 is again going to be a factor, so I'll simply write 9 here. After this, we have one more factor, which is 6. And what is the number that we uh, get after dividing 6 by 6? So, okay, 36 by 6, so it's again 6. So this means that 6 is again going to be one of the factors, right? Now, guys, this is how we can get every factor of a particular number. So now I want you to observe something. First of all, let me raise all this stuff. See guys, I'm simply going to start from i equals to 1 and for every i, we have n divided by a i as another factor, right? You can see that for i equals to 2, we have n by 2 as another factor, right? Similarly, for every i, we have n by i as another factor. So what we can do is we can basically check out every factor in pairs, every factor in pairs. If we have found i as the factor then we can simply check out i uh, n by i as another factor right so guys we are simply going to iterate from i equals to 1 to something in the middle right because this is the point where we need to stop because if we have try out uh, these particular factors then these are also uh, checked out right this is what we can say okay after this 
my question is what is the condition where we need to stop this is the question that we have right so i want you to observe something here i keeps increasing in this direction right i keeps increasing and n by i keeps decreasing in this direction this is n by i right so can i say that a point will come somewhere in the between where i will become equals to n by i and even you can say see here that uh, 6 uh, is equal to 36 by 6 isn't it so this is the point where we need to stop guys so can i say that for this can i say that i cross i is equal to n because both means the same right mathematically both are same after this can i say that i equals to under root of n so we are going to start from i equals to 1 and we are going to uh, like traverse till our i is i is smaller than equal to under root of n so this is what guys we can figure out right now i am going to write an optimal approach in order to check out every factor let's see how so we can start a loop right we can start a loop so i simply write 4 i equals to 1 2 i is smaller than equal to under root of n right inside this particular loop i'll check if my n mod i equals to 0 in that case guys i have got two factors here so i am going to traverse uh, i am going to traverse two factors at a time first one is i the second is n by i right so guys this is how i can check out every factor in a very efficient manner what is the time complexity the time complexity for this particular method is o of square root of n isn't it so guys this is the efficient method that we have in order to check out every factor once we have got every factor uh, at this point so we can check if the factor is prime i'll simply write if my factor is prime so this is a function if my prime uh, is my current factor i is prime then i can say that answer equal to max of answer and i right this is how we can maximize the prime factor as well similarly we are going to check for second factor as well if my uh, n by i is prime right n by i is my prime number so it is going to be a prime factor right so i'm simply going to write max of answer comma n by i now guys i hope the idea is clear to you right this is how we can solve the problem i am simply going to initialize answer with something equal to minus one and at last we just need to return answer i hope the idea is clear to you talking about the time complexity of the approach that we have so this is the whole approach guys this is the whole approach all you need to do is you need to write this particular function which is prime function how we can write this function see a prime number is basically a number which is not divisible by any number in between so if these are the factors then prime number will not be divisible by any number apart from one and the number itself right so we can check we can again try out every factor in order to check out prime number so i'll simply say that okay for i equals to 2 then i smaller than uh root of n right and then i plus plus i is more than equal to root of n then i plus plus why i am starting from 2 because i can't check out 1 1 is going to be a factor of every number so we don't need to start from 1 inside this particular loop guys what i can do is i can simply say that if my n mod i equals to 0 this means that we have found a factor for the given number right let's say we have a number 36 so this number is not a prime number so this is how we can check for prime number in that case we can simply return false and if we have uh, like checked out every uh, number in this particular range and th there was no any factor so we can simply return true this means that the number is a prime number right there is an exception guys one is neither a prime number nor a composite number right so this is a brief about how we check prime number i'm not going to explain this particular thing in detail but what interesting about this is the time complexity is o of square root n right so again the time complexity o of square root of n so the total time complexity of this approach is going to be o of root n into root n right guys this is the first approach that we have now let me show you the code from the code we are again going to figure out some interesting things guys so see this is the code i have written the c plus plus code here then i have written the java code and this is the python code in the code see i am starting from two guys why i am starting from two because i am interested in prime factors only so there is no sense of starting from one right so i can start from two and the moment i start from two instead of this one if i start from two then i have created one problem let me explain you that particular problem guys see these are the factors right and when i start from two then i am not checking this one and 
for this one we also check this n by i which is 36 you can see that we check two factors at a time so if we don't check one then we are not checking the number n by n itself right so we are not checking the number n so we have to check it manually so that we can handle this particular case as well if our prom given input number is a prime number so we have to return that number right so let's say we have 23 in the input so we have to return 23 as the output because 23 is the largest prime factor of the number so guys that's why we are handling the case here you can see that we are checking this particular condition because we are starting from 2 now i hope the idea is clear to you guys this is about the first approach now we are going to talk about an efficient approach which is the, which is the second approach so let's start with the second approach now so let me move to the next page okay so let's say i have a number n in the input i'm going to represent the prime factors of the number n by p1 p2 p3 up to pm where pm is going to be the largest prime factor or the maximum prime factor and p1 p2 p3 are going to be other prime factors guys we know one thing that we can represent any number n by the powers of prime factor how i can represent so i can write p1 raised to the power x then p2 raised to the power y then p3 raised to the power z up to pm raised to the power let's say k this is how we can represent any number in order to explain better i am going to take an example so let's say i have a number let me take a smaller example so let's say i have 12 i can write 12 as 4 into 3 or i can write 2 raised to the power 2 into 3 raised to the power 1 so guys you can see that how i am going to represent a number 12 in the form of powers of prime numbers right and these prime numbers are the prime factor of 12 now let me take another example so if i have n equals to 36 then i can write a uh, 6 into 6 or i can write 2 into 3 into 2 into 3 or i can write 2 raised to the power 2 into 3 raised to the power 2 guys you can see that again i am going to represent a number 36 in the form of powers of prime factors right now let me remove these particular things i am going to uh, get some space now and guys what i'll do is i'll first write uh, the prime factor representation of this particular number so I can write this number as 2 raised to the power 2 into 3 raised to the power 2 into 7 raised to the power 3 right so this is how I can write this particular number now let me talk about the approach guys the approach says that you are going to uh, like you are going to divide this particular number by each of the prime factor first of all you will keep dividing the number with 2 till it is divisible by 2 right so after this 2 will be get eliminated after this you will come to 3 then you will keep dividing the number by 3 till this 3 gets eliminated basically gets eliminated means that uh, this number will not be divisible by uh, 3 anymore right after this i will come to 7 right and i'll keep dividing by 7 till i get 7 itself so once you have done this your answer will be stored in the number n right so you just need to return n let me show you the dry run guys so we have the number which is 12,348 right 348 so this is the number and what is the prime factor representation so it says that 2 raised to the power 2 into 3 raised to the power 2 into 7 raised to the power 3 right first of all I'll start with x equals to 2 right so I'll keep dividing this number by 2 so you can see that it's divisible by 2 because we have this particular number right now first of all when we divide this number by 2 then we get 6174 right guys it is still divisible by 4 because once I divide this number by 2 then it remains 2 raised to the power 1 here right and again I can divide this number by 2 so if I again divide by 2 then I will get 3087 and now you can see that this part is also eliminated so now this number is not divisible by 2 right so now this part is no more there for this particular number I can write this number as 3 raised to the power 2 into 7 raised to the power 3 I hope it's clear till now after this we are going to increase x so x x now equal to 3 so I'll do x plus plus right guys see now I'm going to divide the number by 3 so when I divide 3087 by 3 then I get 1029 and guys now power will reduce by 1 so this number is nothing but 3 raised to the power 1 into 7 raised to the power 3 right after this again I can divide this number by 3 because factor 3 is there so I'll get 343 3. and now you can see that this part will also get eliminated and now I will have 7 raised to the power 3 right and even you know that 7 raised to the power 3 is equal to 343 3, right now guys I'm going to increase x because this number is not divisible by 3 anymore right so I'm going to increase x 
x is now equal to 4 and there is one interesting thing to observe here that 4 is not a prime number right this means that i am not iterating over prime factors but still i am going to iterate over prime factors how you can see that 4 is not uh, like a prime number but still this particular number is not divisible by 4 right but why is this the reason is when i divide this number by 2 then I stop at the point where this number is not divisible by 2 anymore and if the number is not divisible by 2 this means that number is not divisible by any factor of the number 2 also right this means that number is not divisible by 4 then 6 then 8 any factor of 2 so this is what it means guys this is how I am going to iterate over prime factors only if the number is equal to 4 then the number is not divisible I'll simply come to x equal to 5 the number is not divisible by 5 as well so I'll in again increase x equal to 6 and again we have a composite number and for this again the number is not divisible by 6 why because we have already eliminated every uh, factor of 2 right after this i will come to x equal to 7 and guys now i am going to divide this number by 7 so i will get 49 after this again i will divide by 7 so i'll get 7 this is the point where i need to stop right how i am going to keep track of this particular point like when i reach this point so guys see when my n equals to x raised to the power 1 and this x is basically xm right x keeps increasing and when my n becomes equal to x raised to the power 1 then i need to stop or can i say that when my n becomes smaller than xm raised to the power 2 yes of course i can say that or i can say that n is smaller than xm into xm guys i can keep track of this particular condition in order to reach to the base condition so now i can write the pseudocode guys it will make the idea more clear so i have x equal to 2 initially after this while my xm into xm is smaller than a uh, n right or smaller than equal to n in that particular case i'm simply going to divide the number so if my n mod x is basically equal to 0 this means that n is divisible by x right i don't need to write xm i need to write x okay so in this particular case i need to divide n by x so i'll say that n equals to n by x this is what i'm doing even you can see here as well right i keep dividing by a number and once it's not divisible by the number anymore then i need to increase the number so in else case i'll simply do x plus plus guys i hope the idea is clear to you so at last i'm simply going to return n and see the beauty of this code guys this code is automatically going to handle the case for prime factors as uh, let me write some numbers here so i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 for these number guys i am starting from 2 and i keep dividing by 2 so once uh, i reach a point where it's not divisible by 2 then one thing is sure that it will not be divisible by 4 6 and 8 right Sim in a similar manner i start dividing by 3 and see guys once i reach a point where the number is not divisible by 3 then it will not be divisible by 6 and 9 as well so this is how i am iterating over only prime factors right you can see that i have 2 3 only and now for these particular cases i am not going to iterate so guys this is how i am going to handle the case for prime factors talking about the time complexity so for the first time it may feel like the time complexity is o of square root of n right because you can see that i am uh, moving the loop till my x cross x is smaller than n but it's actually tricky to understand let me explain why i keep dividing till this number is divisible by 4 right so for x equal to 2 it is going to run this much time x time then y time then z time right so x plus y plus z up to k is basically equal to number of factors right number of prime factors prime factors so let me represent this as m so the total time complexity is going to be o of m plus root n because either this condition will be true or this condition will be true so guys this is the actual time complexity space complexity is o of 1 now let me show you the code okay so here i have written the code guys you can see that code is very similar to the uh, approach i have written in the whiteboard right so this is all about this video i hope you guys will like the explanation thank you